Welcome to our shop. My name is Rachel Gingell. And my name is Dan. I'm Rachel's dad. Today we're working on a side distributor 8N Ford and we're going to talk about the points, the condenser, the cap, the rotor. We're going to do some serious troubleshooting for you to help determine which parts you need. Then we'll show you how to put those parts onto your tractor and install those parts in time. These techniques do apply to the 8N Ford behind us, but they also apply to a NAA Jubilee 600, 700, 800, 900, 2000, and 4000 Ford with a four-cylinder gas engine. The distributor on those tractors is nearly identical, so go ahead and follow along with us. At the end, you'll have the confidence to do a tune-up on your very own Ford tractor. People typically choose to do a tune-up for two reasons. One is just regular maintenance. The second reason is their tractor doesn't start. So when your tractor was a good running tractor and now all of a sudden it won't run anymore, there's two things, gas or fuel and your spark. So in this video, we're gonna talk about troubleshooting spark. If you have eliminated fuel and know you've got good fuel flow and you don't have spark, this is how you're gonna pinpoint what the culprit is for the reason why you don't have spark. So Rachel and I have a test tool here. It's just a screwdriver with a light in it. It's one of our favorite tools. I use this in triage quickly to determine what the problem is with the tractor. This tractor is an eight inch side distributor. It's been changed to 12 volt. Probably in our group here now around us, probably more than half of these tractors are not six volt anymore. If yours is still six volt, this system still works. It doesn't matter if it's six or an eight volt or a 12 volt. This system that we're gonna show you is still a great way to troubleshooting. The difference is this tractor is now no longer positive ground. This tractor has been switched to negative ground. So the tester here that Rachel and I are using, this end has to go on whichever is the ground. I don't care if it's positive ground, negative ground, if it's wired. However, this end of the electrode here has to be on the ground. So all I did was look at the battery. This cable here goes to the ground of the frame. So we're gonna hook this up which is negative on this tractor, but whichever one goes to the ground, we're gonna hook this up because Rachel's end is gonna to touch power. So we're just trying to get ground and power. So I'm hooking up the cable here to the ground terminal, the one that goes to ground. You can actually hook it to the ground of the tractor if that makes it easier for you, but I like to go right to the battery. So now Rachel's tool is gonna to work to find out what we're trying to do is when I roll this over, that light should come on and off, on and off, on and off. If it stays on, your points never make contact. So bingo, our points are bad. Or our points need to be uh, cleaned or they're readjusted or the gap's incorrect. This is also a good way to test if your gap is right because they will not flash. So let's see if ours flash. You ready, Rachel? Yes. Here we go. Rachel has put the other end of the electrode right onto the distributor there and she's got a light on, so that means the points are open, okay? So the points are open, we're gonna hope they flash when we roll it over, here we go. Boy, you can really see this tool works well, it flashes, so that tells us our points are making to ground, opening, ground, opening, ground, opening, so our points are good, we know that. We do not know the health of the coil, we don't know the health of the rotor and the cap and the wires and the spark plug. So we don't know that, but we know now that our points and condenser are okay. So let's go past that and let's check the spark. Our next step in troubleshooting is to check the rotor and cap as well as the health of the coil. And we can do that with a simple spark analyzer like this one. Now you put this in line. I'm just gonna choose any spark plug. So I'm gonna go here with number three. So I'm just gonna take the spark plug wire off. This clip, will go right onto the plug. And then the end of this tool will go into, you put the wire in there. Let me get it. Oh. There we go. And then I'm just gonna set this aside. Let me see where that's gonna be a good spot. I think it'll rest right there. Maybe right there. So I can see the color. I guess I can hold it. You can hold it as long as you're touching a rubberized part. My manifold's hot there. Did you see me jump? I just got it. Um, the, you can touch a rubberized part, but don't touch the end here because you'll get a little poke from the spark. So just be careful with this tool. When we have this on here, we're going to roll the tractor over and we're looking for a blue spark. That's going to be healthy. If your spark is weak or if it's yellow, that tells you that your spark is weak. Also, this little tool that we have here, this is a 
a super cheap tool, but man, with that little window, we're gonna see the actual spark that's yeah. going to the spark plug. If your spark plug is fouled, which could be the case on this tractor, mm -hmm. it will not spark through the spark plug. It'll show a, a weak spark. So sometimes uh, at this point, we might just go ahead and throw four brand new spark plugs in it because we're gonna change them anyhow, but sure. we just wanna show the health of this spark right now. Sure. So you have to turn the key on. I've got the key on, make sure the tractor's in neutral. And are you ready, Rachel? Yep, and I'm out of the way of the fan blade too, so I'm okay. Okay, I see a really good healthy spark. I see a I'm real nice that. blue spark. That's what it should look like when your tractor's running well. And if you see a different type of spark, you know that you've found a problem, either in your coil, your rotor, or your cap somewhere in there. And also this tool works on six volt as well as 12 volt. You're gonna see the same blue spark on six volt as you're gonna see on 12 volt. This distributor is the one from the 8N. This one in my hand is the NAA or newer style distributor. The gears on the end are different. While these distributors are very similar, they're not interchangeable because that gear is different. Also a 600 or 800 will have a dust cover on it and the 8Ns don't have a dust cover. Sometimes people will try to modify and put a dust cover on an 8N, which I guess you can do, but it's not necessary and it's not shown in the original parts book. When you're ready, you can just take these two tabs off of the distributor to take the cap off. Notice how I used a screwdriver and I pried right at the tip here. If you pry down here towards the bottom, you run the risk of either stretching out or breaking that strap there. So just pry gently off at the top and they'll snap off. Once you pull the cap off, you can do some inspection inside. These little tabs are called electrodes and then the center carbon button. If any of those are damaged, that could be the one reason why you don't have spark. They just look minor and can totally get overlooked but they're actually really important. So inspect your cap and take a look at that. Inside here, you see first the rotor and that will just pull right off gently. Inspect your rotor, you're looking for anything that's burnt or damaged on the tip of the rotor. You can see that mine does have some burn marks, but this one would probably still work. Sometimes you'll see a hole up here. Both of those would be indications that your rotor is bad and needs to be replaced. Underneath your rotor, there's this little clip underneath here. Let me get it, there you go. It does tend to stay intact on an 8N distributor a little better than a 600 or 800. This tab's really important. So take that off and keep track of it or if you lose it, you can replace it. Inside here, you see the condenser and the points. I like to start over here and take this little wire off of the condenser. So let me go ahead and turn that distributor towards you so you can see what I'm doing. You can use a little tiny wrench like this one to pull that off. I'm just going to get it loose enough. I'm going to keep it on the um, threads right now. And once that's loose, your condenser wire will come right off. Then I'm going to be really careful and try to not drop that nut as I'm going. And just take that off of there. There we go. I got it. I'm going to keep track of it right here. Next, you can take the condenser off if you want to and replace it. There's a little one screw that holds it and there's this strap that wraps around it. Typically in a rebuild kit, you do reuse the screw, but you get a new condenser and strap. I'm gonna set that aside. And next you'll see the points here. This little strap that comes out of there is extremely fragile. So just work really gently with it and you need to pry it off of the prong there. Just trying to be really careful here because I don't want to damage that at all. It's crucial and fragile. So I'm going to just ever so slightly bend that out of the way. Then you can use your screwdriver here to loosen up the points. There's just two screws that hold the points on. I did take this distributor out of my tractor just so that you can see what's going on. If I left it on the tractor, you'd have a hard time seeing what I'm doing. You can leave your distributor in the tractor. You can definitely access these parts with it in the tractor. It's a little tight on the 8 end. It's all the more exposed on Jubilee and newer tractors. So leave it in there. Don't take it out. Once you have those two screws removed, your points are freed up to pull out just like that. And then you have your distributor disassembled. When you are ready to tune up your own tractor, you'll need some parts. The parts on this table in front of me are offered on my website. We offer spark plug wires in different applications. So this longer set is for the 8N and then this shorter set is for like the 134 and 172 engine tractors. We also offer a starter button. This is a really high quality starter button. It does come with a little gasket underneath if you decide you need to replace yours. 
Back here, these components are what we call the master tune-up kit with new spark plugs, rotor points, condenser, and cap, as well as a little gauge. If you need everything in the master tune-up kit, then this is a kit for you, but if you don't need all of these, we do offer these components individually as well so you can piece out exactly what you need. If you need to replace your dust cover or a dust cap, or this little clip that holds the rotor on, those are sold separately, so make sure you add them to your cart as a separate item from a tune-up kit. Coils are available in either 6 volt or 12 volt, or internally resisted or to be used with an external resistor like this one. So look at your system, figure out which coil you need, and then just follow the description closely for the voltage or resistance. If you don't already own a manual for your tractor, we offer those as well. We have one manual that's for the 8N, 9N, 2N Ford. We have a different one that's, this is the N series Ford. This one's for the Jubilee and NAA. Or this one is for the 600, 700, 800, 900, or four cylinder 2000 and 4000 models. These manuals do cover the things that we show on this video, but they also cover all the other components of the tractor. So if you need help with your transmission, your engine, your steering, your clutch, the hydraulics, etc., you're going to find that information inside these books and it will be a very valuable asset to you as you own your tractor. All of these items are available on my website, which is farmtractorrepair.com. Okay, I'm making sure that the bottom is really clean here in Michigan, we can get condensation and get a little bit of rust. The points have to make contact with the ground on the bottom. So I am making sure I'm using a brass brush and the bottom is really nice and clean. And I'm, I'm real happy with that. So we're gonna make good contact there. Rachel's putting just a little bit of grease on the lobes. And you wanna be careful, I've seen people put gobs of grease in here and then the grease gets on the points and bingo, we're back to not running again. So I just want a little bit of grease to touch this tab to make it work uh, and not wear. This has a little prong in the bottom of the points that this pivots on, so I've got to get that into there without breaking them. There we go, they sit nice and flat once they're in there. Rachel's going to put the screw in, and I've got the back screw. You can use a self starting screwdriver if you need to, like me. All right, so Rachel's. Um, Putting them in there, we're gonna set them while we put the points in right now. Rachel's got the gauge. I can turn it from the bottom to the high lobe. There's the high lobe. Rachel, go ahead and drop it in there. Do you see on the shaft here, when it's at that high point, that's what we're calling high lobe. Yeah, the points open up. So we're gonna okay. open them up on and the highest point. And this is the gap where you want to set the points. The feeler gauge that comes with your kit is 25 thousandths. That's a great place to be. And you just want your gauge to move through there and you know, move freely, not be like so tight, you have to really crank on it to get it to move, just move freely. And that's your set at 25 thousandths. You move that with this screw if you need to set that. This screw here is adjustable, but you also have to loosen this one like Rachel said. So I'm opening and closing it by turning the bottom of the shaft. I just want to see them open and close, open and close. And they do because they have to close or they won't work. So now we've got that done. Rachel's got the condenser and the screw and she's a lot better at putting this in than I am anymore. If you can just get it started for me, Rachel, the two of us together can get these Got in. Got it, wow, look at that. It went really easy. The condenser sits in here on the side, but you have to make sure that it's in right because you don't want it to touch the lobe of the distributor. Got it. Okay. Now we're gonna put the little strap that Rachel talked about that's fragile. I got it right on. I've got the little nut that goes on there. I'm going to put that back in. Again, you don't want to drop it into the distributor. So it's kind of tricky to start. I got it started. I only went on just a little bit because this little guy here has to go in behind it. And then Rachel's got the little wrench. She's going to give it to me. We're going to tighten this right up. We're stepping through this kind of fast, but if you watch us disassemble it, we're just putting it back together exactly like Rachel disassembled it. Now this here you can over tighten breaking real easily so we don't want to do that. I'm also important that this is flat across the top. You don't want it cocked so that it hits the rotor. We put the screws in here. If you lose one of those screws, them are real short screws, you do not want to put an extra long screw in because the weights are swinging very very close underneath there and they'll hit the weights. All right, so on a 600 Ford, this is on an 8N. We're doing a side distributor 8N. A 600 Ford at this step here has a dust cover. Now, there is a little, um, there's notches around here, and you can figure that they um, 
you know, where they go. You do notice that there's the arrow for the oiler and you have to get that in the right direction here and then line ups correctly. So again, we're doing an eight in, it doesn't have the dust cover on it. And so we're gonna uh, stop at this point. We've got it all done. We're gonna put the rotor in that little clip. This little guy here is missed. We had a tractor the other day, Saturday came in the shop, the tractor wasn't running right. And that rotor, if we put it on there without that clip, you put it on, it's loose. It, 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 it doesn't sit tight on there and it can come off inside the calf while the tractor's running. What a mess yeah. that makes. Yeah. So this little clip, which I'm not sure like why. That, they, that sometimes is the culprit of the whole reason why we don't have spark. It's because that clip's missing. So don't or, overlook it. Or the rotor is hitting the electrodes inside yeah. the cover. We've had customers call us and tell us, man, my rotor is hitting the and electrodes. And then it damages the cap in turn. So you just, yep. it's one thing leads to the next. So there's a little groove that it goes down on. I made sure it snapped in the little groove. Inside the rotor here, look closely. You'll see a flat spot that lines up to the flat spot on the shaft, as you can imagine. So we'll set that on there. And it's snug, it's secure. Now I've had sometimes where they're real snug and I just take an end of the screwdriver, the plastic in, and give it a little tap, make sure that it's on, because I don't want this coming loose. The other thing, the last thing to check here before we go any further, is to make sure when we get this in the tractor, it's sitting in the vise now so you can't tell. I want to make sure this isn't loose in the distributor and that that bushing's bad, because that'll lose the gap. At this point, it's important to determine which coil you need. We offer a handful of different coils and they're rated by different things. So the first is you need to choose either a six volt or 12 volt coil. And you're gonna, of course, choose that based off of what system you have on your tractor. Once you know what your voltage is, the second question is, is are you using an external resistor, which is one of these, or do you want an internally resisted coil? So an internally resisted coil, like the one in my hand, does not need to be used with an additional resistor. In contrast, if you purchased a coil that's rated to be used with an external resistor, then you would want one of these in line. So a healthy coil that is 12 volt that is to be used without a resistor should be about three ohms. And we'll show you how to test that. We have our meter set to read ohms and we should get something around three. What do we see? 3.6. Now it's warm here, so yes. it'll change according to the weather, but somewhere around three ohms is what we're shooting for. And if you have a different coil, whether it's six volt or you're using a coil that's to be used with a resistor, you're going to get a different reading. In my opinion, and I think you would agree, we have the same opinion on yes, this. Google. Okay. <laughs> then this is the easiest coil to put on your tractor. Oh. Get rid of the resistor, put a new coil on. These are very affordable. It's not an expensive part and you just oh, put it yes. on and you solve a lot of problems so oh, I, I just do not like seeing tractors where they try to put a six volt coil on and pile up resistors no. to get it to work no yeah. just buy the right coil. so um, resistors can be hidden underneath the hood sometimes oh. behind the dash so look closely and see if you have a resistor um, that could be if you have a resistor with a coil it's not supposed to have a resistor that can be the reason that your tractor starts hard yes it could give you bad weak spark Right. Yeah, or the tractor can run for a little while and quit because yes. the coil's getting so hot. That's another thing we get things on. Yeah. If you don't know if the tractor has a resistor under the dash, simply put your voltmeter, change this to volts, and put your voltmeter here and see if it has 12 volts. We're shooting for 12 volts at the coil. Yeah. The next step is to put a new cap and spark plug wires onto the tractor. So if your tractor was in proper time beforehand, the easiest thing for you to do is to take one wire off at a time and replace them in the same exact order as what was existing. The order you want to do is one, two, four, three. On an 8N Ford, it's counterclockwise, but be very careful on a Jubilee, NAA, or newer tractor, the rotation is clockwise. I can't stress that enough. My fear is that you'll hear me you'll see me demonstrate counterclockwise on an 8N and then you'll go working on a Ford 600 and you'll copy it the same way I have. If you have a different model, know that Jubilee and Newer are clockwise, meaning this will be one, two, four, three, or one, two, four, three, wherever your um, number one is gonna start, you're gonna either go counterclockwise on an 8N, clockwise on Jubilee or Newer. Really want you to understand that. Now you're going to put your number one wire where the rotor is pointing when you're at top dead center. That's wherever one's going to start. One can start at any one of these four holes. It doesn't necessarily have to start at where the number one is indicated on your cap because your distributor can be in any rotation. 
So with that, you can go ahead and replace your wires. You get one wire like this that has two ends that match. That goes in the center for the coil. And then you can lay out the rest of your wires and um, this end will go into the cap. This end will go onto the spark plug. Number one is always the closest to the radiator. One, two, three, four is the order, the number of your spark plugs. Make sure that when you put these on that you really snap them all the way in there. You have to push them all the way down like that. Don't leave them resting up slightly higher or they won't make good contact. And that is true for both the cap end and the spark plug wire end. You can lay out your wires and obviously the shortest one is gonna go here at cylinder number one and the longest all the way back to cylinder number four because it has to reach the farthest away from the distributor. So with that, you can put your new cap and wires on and just make sure you get the order correct. The last step of this tune-up is the spark plugs. Take a few minutes to do this right. In the master tune-up kit comes the little feeler gauge for the points. It's 25 thousandths, same gap for the spark plug, 25 thousandths on the electrode. So we're making sure that they're 25, they are. I put a little bit of anti-seize on the threads. I like that, there it is. I just put a little bit on, I did not get any on the electrode. So I'm gonna screw that in a hole. I wanna protect this head and the threads as much as I can. And boy, that anti-seize really protects the threads and you can run them right in with your thumb easy. And the next time you go to take them out, they'll come out easy. So that's a really good step to do. Last is a, um, dielectric grease. Put a little bit of dielectric grease in the end of the spark plug, right inside. You can put it on this spark plug top and then when you put the top on, the dielectric grease keeps these to where they come off easy the next time you want to take them off, you don't tear them apart. Last, we noticed this tractor here, the spark plug had laid against the hot plug and melted this almost right off. So this spark plug almost got melted off. This tractor does not have the wire loom like most of them. So we're gonna use zip ties and put this together really nice to keep these wires up off. The hot manifold is right here and the hot spark plugs, both will wreck the wires. Very important to take the last step and do that. And then we're gonna start this tractor up and see how it runs. Now that we're finished, we're ready to start this tractor up and see how our improvements work for us. Our tractor starts right up and it runs strong. This is the result of a good tune-up and an electrical system that's working as it should. I hope that this video is helpful to you and that it gives you the confidence to tune up your own tractor. We have a lot of other videos on the N-Series Ford tractors. We have engine videos, hydraulics, the carburetor. So look for those videos if you need some additional help on your tractor. You can purchase parts on my website, which is farmtractorrepair.com. You can also subscribe to our channel for a notification every time we release a new video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.